Welcome to our 2023 Ash Wednesday service. Welcome to those who might be visitors this evening. We are glad to have you here and blessed by your presence. Welcome also to those who are joining us online. We are glad to have your presence with us as well. It has been several years since we have hosted an Ash Wednesday service here at First Baptist Church. In doing so, it is my hope that we will find common ground and unity as we journey the season of Lent and arrive at resurrection and new life on Easter Sunday morning. Lent is the season of fasting and penitence that precedes Easter. In the early church, Lent began six weeks before Easter, which provided 36 days of fasting, excluding the Sundays. In the 7th century, four days were added before the first Sunday in Lent to establish 40 days of fasting, again excluding the Sundays. This was done to imitate the 40 days that Jesus fasted in the desert following his baptism. The beginning of the season of Lent was symbolized by placing ashes on the foreheads of the entire congregation, wearing sackcloth, and efforts to remain pure following the repentance of sins. Therefore, the tradition of Ash Wednesday was born, and today it is still observed by Catholics and Protestants alike. On Ash Wednesday, ashes obtained by burning the palm leaves from the previous year's Palm Sunday are imposed on the forehead, or in our case, on the hand if preferred, of each worshiper, accompanied by the words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. To some, those words might sound harsh, but in remembering our fragile nature and that God our Creator breathed life into our lungs, and that it is His power that sustains us, we place ourselves in His hands and are positioned to invite Him to do His work in our lives. The elements of this service are arranged in such a way as to lead us into moments where we confess our sins, consider the things that we should fast from or sacrifice during Lent, and to also set new intentions that deepen our relationship with God. Uh, Please do make sure that you have received a card that looks like this, and a pen or pencil to participate during that portion of the service. We should have some extra ones. If anyone did not get them, they may be at the back. Where's Beth at? Do you still have a few extras, or are they now on the... F- they're on... The- Where's the ledge? I miss... I can't see the ledge. Okay, there's no... So there's no more cards over there. Um, So there's no more cards. Okay, so there's no more cards. So if you didn't get one, I'm sorry. You might have to try to steal one from a neighbor. Um, But if you do need a pen also there or a pencil, there are, are some here as well. And now I invite you to be open to the Holy Spirit's leading during this time of worship. Be open to the new thing that God might want to do in your life and in the life of our church. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember tonight what is the start of this season. Lord, help us to take in the message that you're bringing to us tonight. Help us to take it and live it and breathe it and to understand its meaning. Lord, help us to live it and let it shine from here and spread it throughout this world. Lord, guide us, lead us, and direct us in your ways and let us celebrate the season. It's in your name we pray. Amen. The psalm reading tonight comes from Psalm 51, 1 through 17. 
have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion and it haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we see uh, in that psalm that was just read, um, it's a psalm of repentance. And that psalm of repentance, um, and repentance is uh, turning um, from a way of sin, from a path of sin, a path away from God and turning back to God. Uh, That begins with confession of sins. And so tonight we're going to have a time where we can have private prayer um, in the pew and we can confess our sins to the Lord. So for the next couple of minutes as the music plays, uh, let us each sit and reflect and confess our sins to God.
so many ways. Lord, we thank you that we are covered by the blood of Christ, that we have professed faith and trusted him for salvation. Uh, but Lord, it doesn't stop us from having the sinful nature, the flesh that we live in. As Paul says in, in Galatians, there will always be this battle between the spirit and the flesh. So, Lord, tonight we recognize the ways that, as I said, we miss the mark, the ways that we sin, the ways that we uh, allow things to, uh, to grow in our lives that, uh, that, will, that blind us and lead us away from you. So tonight, Lord, we confess those things to you and we ask forgiveness. And Lord, if we have searched our hearts and reflected and brought those things to you, we now stand not holding them any longer. But as we have confessed our sin, you are faithful and just and have forgiven us. So Lord, let us not carry that burden any longer, for it's not ours to carry. You have taken it from us. The shame, the guilt, all of it. We are free and we are forgiven. And we give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite you to stand as we sing and worship King of Kings.
I know that uh, it has been quite a while since our church has had an Ash Wednesday service because a lot of people who've been here a long time have been asking me a lot of questions. That's how, you know, I've only been here a couple of years, so, uh, so that's how I gauge that. Couldn't find a date on it, but we don't really need one because we're here today, right? And uh, we're here to be with the Lord, and I, think, I, I don't think, I know that this is going to be a special season of Lent for our church as we begin it together. But I would like to share with you the first time I ever heard about Lent. I grew up in a, a very good church, uh, but there were a lot of things I didn't learn about growing up. We only did Christmas and Easter. That was about it, okay? And so other than that, and homecoming, sorry, that was another holy day we did. Homecoming, cannot forget homecoming. Um, but uh, I remember I, I went on a, um, I, I got invited to go to a rival schools. I went to Hobgood Academy. We had two other rivals, Enfield Academy and Halifax Academy. Enfield Academy, we kind of got along with because they didn't beat us as much. But Halifax County, we absolutely, uh, Halifax Academy, we absolutely hated because they beat us and we beat them. It was back and forth all the time. But anyway, knew a couple of girls over at um, Enfield Academy and they had a friend who needed a date to the prom. And so I was the one who was asked and she wanted only a good Christian boy. So I hope, I mean, I was like the minister's kid. So I guess that that, that uh, qualified me. Anyway, so I uh, went to this, uh, to this prom and, and, of course, behaved like you should at the prom, you know. And uh, afterwards, uh, the guy uh, the, who was driving was like, let's go somewhere and get some food. So I don't remember exactly where we went, but we got there and someone said, let's order a bunch of fries. And I remember my date saying, I can't have any fries. And so I looked at her like, well, who can't have fries? And then she said, I am fasting from fries. I gave them up for Lent. And I'm like, what is Lent? And she said, you know, it's the, the season before Easter. And I'm like, if you can't have fries, what kind of demon thought that up? I mean, because <laughs> fries are good. So I asked her some more questions, and then she said she went to a Bible study at her church once a week, and they talked about this. And then later I tried to ask her, like, this is like my first time meeting her, you know. I'm like, hey, you think uh, we might can go out again? She's like, no. And um, so evidently, like, I was a bad first impression. She was really serious about God. I'm going with the second one. She was just really serious about God. But that was the first time I'd heard of, of Lent. I just didn't grow up with it being part of my uh, vocabulary, part of my church experience. Um, however, the, the first church I served in ministry, Memorial Baptist Church in Williamston, uh, was part of a... Uh, um, uh, uh, a ministerial associate, association, and there was an Ash Wednesday service, and so I got to go to my first one. And then there were Lenten services, not just the week of Easter, but it was one every Wednesday throughout the season of Lent. And and Gina and I uh, met soon after that, and and um, she had a Catholic background, and so Lent was and, and Ash Wednesday were part of her vocabulary already. And so we started attending services each year together, and then we got married. Uh, we would uh, journey through the season of Lent together, and it became very meaningful. In fact, as I think back to some of the times that I grew the most, it um, wasn't necessarily during my seminary time or being at a particular church, but it was when I took ownership for my spiritual journey, and especially during the season of Lent. And so I want to share a message with you this evening, a meditation, excuse me, a meditation. That's usually about two minutes shorter than my message, so I just want to get that out there. Um, a meditation... Uh, entitled An Invitation to Closeness with God, because that is what this is about. And so we go uh, tonight to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21, and the scripture will be here on the, uh, on the screen. So again, Matthew 6, 1 through 6, and then 16 through 21. And uh, Jesus says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, 
Do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In these verses, Jesus calls out the hypocrisy mainly of the religious leaders who have gathered related to their spiritual disciplines, which he equates to being a show that they are putting on for others. Jesus' words are scathing in that they bring to the forefront the reality of the desire of these religious leaders, these Sadducees and Pharisees. They love to be seen by others more than their desire to know and love God, to give Him the love He deserves and to accept love in return. Surely we don't find ourselves desiring anything other than God during what we're planning to fast from and intend to to lean toward in our lives during Lent. Because if our focus isn't on Jesus, drawing close to Him, we've failed before we've even begun. In the invitation to closeness with God that I'd like to invite you to, uh, found in these verses, Jesus reminds us of a few things. The first is that He is our only audience. Did you hear what he said in in 1 through 4? The scripture up there. Be careful not to practice your, your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they've received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what, you're do- what your right is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then in in 16 through 18, he talks about fasting. When you fast, don't look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. So I I don't know how your experience has been with Lent, um, but I've had some weird experiences with people during Lent regarding to the things that they're fasting from and uh, the things that they are doing. Levi, are you okay? It's late in the evening, I know it is. And so we have to remember that it's our only audience as we enter into this journey. The only audience we should, we should be worried about is the audience of the Lord and not others, not to please others. And Jesus rem- reminds us of that. He also reminds us that Uh, this invitation to closeness with God, uh, that what matters most is where our heart is positioned, that our heart be positioned toward Him. In verse 5 and 6, it says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love again to pray, standing in the synagogues to be seen by others. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. What matters most, again, is the position of, of our heart, who we are pointing to. And lastly, Jesus reminds us that as we sacrifice, we begin to change. And we also begin storing up treasures for eternity. In 19 through 21, he talks about those treasures. He says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, as I mentioned earlier, the the Lenten journey that I would like to invite you to is not one of just fasting and laying something down. But I have found that that that's a helpful practice. But unless we are intent about setting our hearts on things that draw us close to God, not just removing the things that might be a hindrance, but setting our sights on Him and moving closer to Him, we don't get the full effect of what I believe this season should bring into our lives. Gina and I found that early on as we journeyed through Lent together. And we haven't done it every year. There have been some years that, obviously, we get busy with other things going on. Uh, But we found that 
just, just fasting from something, TV, from a certain food, from, uh, while those things are good, um, we need to draw close to the Lord. And when we draw close to the Lord, things start changing in our lives. I preached this past week about, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, about um, you know, the day showing, the day of judgment showing what we've built with our lives. Have, you know, whatever we've built with straw, wood, and hay, those things will be burned up and will be gone. But the precious stones that are there, the gold, the, the refined silver, the precious stones, those things, the, the, when the fire burns, it, it burns the, the excess off, and those things are what is left. I believe that as we set an intention during the season of Lent, we decide on a discipline that we're going to do, a practice that we're going to do, not only what we're not going to do, but what we're going to do, God begins shaping us into the people that He desires us to be. And what we find is that our lives begin to build the things that God desires for our lives to build. So uh, as we thoughtfully this evening declare these intentions, the goal again is closeness to God. In the moments ahead, may God give us wisdom in the decisions that we should make that will lead us to know Him and experience Him at greater levels. Amen.
Testament of God, uh, approved once a year, and so I will be going to that. Blare the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Holy hill, <clears throat> let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending a calamity. Who knows? He may return and re rel relent <clears throat> and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the triumph in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priest who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn. A byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 16. Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle. For our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and particularly of all believers. <clears throat> Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into the task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. This is the word of the Lord. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Beth and Holly, for the readings. Thank you, choir, for the beautiful anthem. We hear in the Joel passage there the call for a fast. You know, there are things, again, I said earlier, there are things in our lives that, that uh, separate us from the Lord. And uh, now is a good time to declare a fast from those things. And so uh, in the, the moments that lay ahead, we're going to, uh, again, have some music playing and have a time for reflection and, again, Hopefully you got one of these cards. Um, I made 80 of them, and it looks like we don't have 80 people. So there may, if you didn't get one, there's some somewhere. Oh, we found an extra one, so we can auction it off. And uh, <laughs> but we have two now. Catherine donated hers. Um, so if you need one, you can come and grab one up here. Also, there are some pens and pencils that are right here if you need that. Um, uh, but Johnny's going to play some music, and. Um, 
again, hopefully you've considered something in your life that you can give up, that you can sacrifice, that you can fast from uh, during this season. In the First Timothy passage there, we hear Paul giving Timothy uh, exhortation to commit himself uh, to the Lord and to the things that the Lord is doing in him. And he talks about uh, physical training having its value, but godliness having value for all things. He tells him to throw himself into his work, into this intention. And so again, I've asked you to consider um, a way that you're going to draw close to the Lord during the season of Lent. So this is a time for us to make these declarations. You don't have to show this to anybody, turn it in, do anything like that. But again, this is, this is for you. This is for this season. And I believe that God has a lot in store for all of us. And so let's spend some time uh, setting our hearts again, declaring these intentions for this season.
now as, uh, as a sign of a symbol of us entering into uh, this season, uh, we will have the imposition of the ashes. There will be uh, two stations. Holly's going to be here. I'm going to be over here. And so we invite you to come down the rows. Um, once everyone has come who, who is uh, going to be able to make it down the rows comes, if anyone was not able to do, uh, come down the rows to, to get through the, the crowd and everything, if you're at your seat, if you could just raise your hand up for us just like this so we can see we will come to, to you wherever you're at. Okay, so we realize that's a lot of moving around and such, and there may, may be some who want to stay uh, seated. Um, also, there is an option if you do not want it on your forehead, please uh, hold out your hand like this and we'll put it on your hand. Okay? If you don't have your hand out, though, your forehead is fair game. All right? So let us uh, have this time.
I love the, I love the different seasons of the church year. Um, but one of the things that I have a hard time with when it comes to different seasons of the year, you know, in Advent, as we lead up to Christmas and the birth of Jesus, we talk a lot about how the world was before Jesus came. You know, we might can find ourselves thinking that he hadn't come yet, but he has. Amen? So there's a lot to celebrate. So uh, you'll find that this season of Lent is not one to, uh, to be sad about, as, you know, s- some churches might focus on the diminishing of the light and such, but there's a lot to be joyful for. And so as we end this service tonight, we're going to end on an upbeat note with a hymn of commitment. There is power in the blood. And so let's rejoice. Let's worship the Lord. Hymn number 329. Please stand. There is power in the blood. God, we thank you that there is power in the blood. There is power that we will be experiencing through your Holy Spirit as we embark on this journey with you. So, Lord, we pray that um, as we move ahead that we will trust you every step of the way. Um, Lord, that when the moments get tough for the things that we are sacrificing and fasting from, that we will, we will keep our eyes fixed on you. And the intentions that we are setting for this season, we pray, will draw us close to you and that we will have an experience of you we may have never have had before. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And may you go in peace. Amen.
Thank you.